So hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's session guys we are going to talk about the PIB news from 9th of August to 12th of August 2022. And kuch time se session nahi ho because tha, I was not well but from now on the session will be continued on its normal time that is Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 8 a.m. Alright. And don't worry, everything will be covered in today's session. We are going to cover the news till 12th of August. And till the next session, we are going to cover the entire backlog, which is our hai, right? So let's begin with the session, guys, without any delay. But before we begin, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join the Telegram channel. The link is provided in the description. And yes, uh, some Nabad people, the, the people who are going to give the Nabad examination are asking that up to when we have to cover the PIB. So I would suggest you to cover up to 25th of August. Okay, because they are going so far ahead. Right, very closely. Bhi. In fact, I would say that if you can do it until 28th, 29th August, PIB kar pao, to that would be good for you. Right, because sometimes it happens that one week before the uh, news se bhi question comes out. Right. So let's talk about the very first question, which says, which IIT has organized research and development workshop under National Mission Interdisciplinary Cyber Physical System. So there is a mission which is being implemented by Department of Science and Technology under the Ministry of Science and Technology, of course. Under this mission, there was a workshop that was organized by an IIT and that IIT has been asked in this question, right? So let's talk about it. It is IIT Delhi. This research and development workshop has been organized by IIT Delhi and it has been organized under this national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems right now the objective of this uh, workshop is to discuss how the projects will be implemented by the six technology innovation hubs which are identified under this mission right why this workshop was organized Kyo organized kiya gaya tha? Taki ye discuss kiya ja sake that how the projects can be implemented by these six tih or the technology innovation hubs which are identified under this mission Right. Now, talking more about this news. So remember, in the workshop, the experts from India and USA participated. And now you must be wondering why experts from USA participated. This is because there is a collaboration between Department of Science and Technology from India and National Science Foundation from USA. And National Science Foundation from USA, Department of Science and Technology, in dono ke beech mein collaboration hai. And under that collaboration, this mission is being implemented in India. Right. And that is why the expert from USA also participated. Okay, so the areas of collaboration between India and USA are agriculture, autonomous systems, technologies, applications, health and environment, rehabilitation and assistive robotics, etc. etc. It is not important for your exam, the areas of collaboration. This is just for the understanding that in which areas the two countries are collaborating. Right. Now talking about this mission. Talking about this mission, so it is being implemented by Department of Science and Technology and it works under the Ministry of Science and Technology, of course, which is headed by Dr. Jitendra Singh. Dr. Jitendra Singh is the minister to encourage innovation in new age technologies. So, uske naam se clear hai, right? The objective is to encourage innovation in the new age technologies. It was launched with a total outlay of 3660 crores for a period of five years, right? And Total six TIHS, yani ki technology innovation hubs have been identified under this mission till now. Right, so that is all about this news and now let's come back to the question. The IIT in question is IIT Delhi because that is the IIT which has organized this development, research and development workshop under this national mission. Alright, option C, IIT Delhi is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number two. Very, very important question up to which date the union cabinet has approved the extension of Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Urban uh, being implemented by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So I hope you all know this that there are two components of Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana. One is urban. Urban is being implemented by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs while the rural one is being implemented by the Ministry of Rural Development. Right. So this Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Urban has now been extended by the union cabinet okay, because States or UTs ne uh, request kari thi union government ko ki bhai ab isko extend karo because the targets are still not completed, right? So that is why it has been now extended by the union cabinet. The approval has been given, right? So talking more about this, so why this extension has been given? Okay, extension kis purpose ke liye diya gaya? What is the purpose? 
so the purpose is to provide financial assistance for the completion of already sanctioned right there will be no new sanction right already sanctioned houses how many 122.69 lakh houses till 31st march 2022 31 march 2022 tak jitne houses sanction ho chuke hain unke completion ke liye jo bhi financial assistance hai ya unke completion mein jo bhi cheeze zarurat hogi uske liye isko extend kiya gaya hai up to 31st december 2024 right up to when 31st december 2024 and the extended scheme will provide uh, benefit ya will provide assistance to the three verticals of pradhan mantri awas yojana urban these are beneficiary led construction or enhancement affordable housing in partnership and in situ slum redevelopment and there are four uh, verticals uh, the fourth one is credit linked capital subsidy so there will be uh, there will not be provided uh, the credit linked capital subsidy will not be provided right so the extension has been given only for the implementation of these three verticals not the fourth one which is credit link capital subsidy all right and up to when 31st december 2024 and if you want to know about this scheme in detail you can search for anuj jindal government scheme there is a playlist i have discussed this scheme in very much detail okay so therefore the correct answer is 31st december 2024 option a is the correct answer <coughs> moving ahead to question number 3 Consider the following statements with respect to India's roadmap for climate protection, and you have to identify the correct statement. Now you must be wondering that are uh, these uh, roadmap, this roadmap, क्या ये कोई नया roadmap है? या कोई नए targets government of India ने announce किए? No, this is not a new roadmap, and there are no new targets that have been announced. It is in news because Dr. Jitendra Singh, the Minister of Science and Technology. during an international conference on system analysis for enabling integrated policy making during this conference he has shared india's road map for climate protection right and that is why we are discussing it because jo examiner hai wo maine dekha hai ki pib mein se hi question uthata hai exact to wo climate change se bhi question utha sakta hai right now remember this conference this conference was organized by tfac which is technology information forecasting and assessment council in collaboration with an organization which is known as international institute for applied system analysis all right now what are the what is the road map for climate protection by india india ka kya road map hai to aap sabko aap sabne suna hi hoga ye sara number 1 reducing aggregate greenhouse emission by 1 billion tons by 2030 number 1 decreasing dependency on 40 uh, on fossil fuels by 50% of the total consumption till the year 2030 reducing carbon to gdp intensity by 45% from 2005 levels and making entire country carbon neutral by the year 2070 all right so these are some of the targets by the government of india with respect to the climate protection do you remember all the targets all are very important right so now let's come back to the question reducing aggregate greenhouse gas emissions by 1 billion tons by 2047 is that so no it is by 2030 uh, decreasing dependency on fossil fuels by 50% of the total consumption in 2035 no again it is 2030 reducing carbon to gdp intensity by 55% from the 2005 level is it 55% no it is 45% right so all the statements are incorrect which means which means none is correct will be the correct answer guys option d moving ahead to question number 4 and in total there are 13 questions right and this question is also very very important name the initiative launched by ministry of social justice and empowerment headed by dr virendra kumar for effective implementation of smile scheme in identified municipal corporations across the country so i hope you all know about this scheme smile schemes aur agar aapko nahi pata hai to again you can search for the playlist anuj jindal government schemes there is a playlist there i have discussed this scheme in very much detail right so what is smile scheme by the way in short the full form is scheme for marginalized individuals for livelihood and enterprises scheme for marginalized individuals for livelihood and enterprises this scheme is meant for two categories of people number one beggars and number two transgender right so the objective of this scheme is to rehabilitation of beggars and transgender theek hai सो so, इस स्कीम के अंदर एक नया इनिशिएटिव लॉन्च किया है सो सो दैट द स्कीम कैन बी इफेक्टिवली इंप्लीमेंटेड इन 
certain number of identified municipal corporations across the country. Now this certain number is 75 actually. ठीक है 75 municipal corporation में इसको implement किया जाएगा and the name of the initiative is Smile 75. Right? What is the name? Smile 75. And 75 here den denotes the number of municipal corporations which have been identified. जहाँ पे इस project को implement किया जाए. Alright? Now the objective of this initiative is the effective implementation of smile scheme only nothing more than that and it has been launched from where from a shelter house in uh, uh, Nizamuddin railway station which is in New Delhi so if anyone ask you from where this project has been launched the answer would be New Delhi <coughs> because of course they are not going to ask Nizamuddin railway station itna detail mein nahi just remember it has been launched from New Delhi right and the objective as I told you is to make our cities and towns and municipal areas begging free and make a strategy for their <coughs> comprehensive rehabilitation. All right. So that is all and therefore the correct answer is option A, smile 75. Moving ahead to question number five. National Intellectual Property Awareness Mission, NITAM, has achieved target, has achieved the target of imparting intellectual property awareness and basic training to 1 million students on 31st July 2022 ahead of the deadline which was 15th of August 2022 right so the question is very simple when was the mission launched so this mission is in news because it has achieved the target way ahead of its deadline right so that is why it is in news and talking about the scheme or the mission so it was launched on 8 December 2021 with an objective to increase awareness about the intellectual property rights and to provide basic training to the students about the intellectual property rights right and ye kuch milestone achieve hue hai. this scheme is being implemented by intellectual property office under the office of controller general of patent designs and trademarks right jo hamara office uh, controller general of patent design and trademark hai uske under ek office aata hai intellectual property office this office is implementing this mission okay and the objective is very simple to create awareness among the students and to provide basic training about the intellectual property rights now these are some of the milestone Number of participants trained more than 10 lakh. In educational institutions covered 3662 and geographical coverage 28 states and 7 UTs. Alright. So that is all. Isse jada detail mein jane ke nahi hai. And this mission was launched in 2021, 8 December 2020, uh, 2021 to be more precise. Right. Option B is the correct answer. <clears throat> Moving ahead to question number 6. Where has Ministry of Cooperation, headed by uh, Mr. Amit Shah, organized National Conference of Rural Cooperative Banks in collaboration with National Federation on State Cooperative Banks? Now, this guys, ho sakta hai ki question na hai, but iske under during this event, jab ye launch ho raha tha, to us samay ek data bataya gaya uh, Amit Shah dwara, jo humare Minister of Cooperation hai. That data is very very important, right? So <clears throat> let's talk about it. So remember it was organized in New Delhi and it was organized by the Ministry of Cooperation in collaboration with National Federation of State Cooperative Banks, right? And where? In New Delhi, right? But very important data are these. The short-term cooperative credit structure in India. The short-term cooperative credit structure in India comprises 34 state cooperative banks. We have 34 state cooperative banks. We have 351 district central cooperative banks. And we have 96,575 PACS, which are Primary Agriculture Credit Society. All right. And this NAFSCOP, which is National Federation of State Cooperative Banks, it was established in the year 1964. Right. 1964 with the objective to facilitate the functioning, the smooth functioning of the state and central cooperative banks. Right. And development of short term cooperative credit structure in India. Okay. So this data, guys are very very important please remember this this is this can be asked in your exam and this conference was organized in new delhi option d is the correct answer moving ahead to question number seven very very important question again which ministry has signed an mou with ministry of ayush uh, to provide technical support under the ayush grid project for a period of three years ministry of ayush is headed by mr sarbanan solo wall right so this ministry is Ministry of Electronics and IT which has signed the MOU with Ministry of Ayush, right? And the objective of this MOU is that the Ministry of Electronics and IT will provide technical support 
टू द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आयुष फॉर डिजिटलाइजेशन ऑफ आयुष सेक्टर अंडर आयुष ग्रिड पॉल प्रोजेक्ट फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ थ्री इयर्स राइट सो लेट मी ब्रेक इट डाउन नंबर वन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड आई टी विल प्रोवाइड टेक्निकल सपोर्ट फॉर वॉट फॉर डिजिटलाइजेशन ऑफ आयुष सेक्टर अंडर विच इनिशिएटिव अंडर आयुष ग्रिड प्रोजेक्ट राइट एंड फॉर हाउ मेनी इयर्स थ्री इयर्स और राइट सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस and talking about ayush grid so remember it is a part of digital india program which was launched by ministry of ayush to leverage information and technology to transform the operational efficiency improve the service delivery basically to transform to digitalize the uh, ayush sector this ayush grid project is being implemented by the ministry of ayush all right and it is the proposed central it platform offering offering multiple it services for all the systems of medicines yoga यूनानी सिद्धा होम्योपैथी आयुर्वेदिक सोवा रिक्पा राइट एक्सेट्रा सो द करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज मिनिस्टर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड आईटी हेडेड बाय मिस्टर अश्विनी वैष्णव एंड ही इज आल्सो द मिनिस्टर ऑफ रेलवे राइट क्वेश्चन नंबर एट पे आ जाते एग्रीकल्चर एंड प्रोसेस फूड प्रोडक्ट प्रोडक्ट एक्सपोर्ट डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी विच इन शॉर्ट इज अपीडा विच वर्क एंड द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री हैज कमेंस <coughs> basmati crop survey in how many states or uts the survey will be conducted very very important question for the upcoming nabad examination this basmati crop survey was not conducted in the last two year because of covid restrictions but this uh, this has been launched this year for the year 2022 kharif season jo hamara abhi ka kharif season hai uske liye isko launch kiya gaya so apida has commenced the basmati crop survey and of course why to estimate acre age assess crop health and expected yield in this uh, basmati rice during the 2022 23 kharif crop season right it is being executed under the basmati export development foundation which is an arm of apida and it will be conducted in seven states and uts which are basmati growing states or uts these are punjab haryana himachal pradesh uttarakhand delhi uttar pradesh and jammu and kashmir right in jammu and kashmir this will be conducted in three districts in jammu and kashmir it will be conducted in three districts and in the rest of the six states and uts it will be conducted in 30 districts theek hai jo baaki 6 hai jammu kashmir ke alawa unme 30 districts mein hoga aur jammu kashmir mein teen districts mein conduct kiya jayega all right and jab result aa jayega tab baat karenge abhi to sirf ye launch hua hai and therefore the correct answer is option c 7 in seven states and uts right this basmati crop survey basmati rice crop survey has been launched moving ahead to question number 9 as per the latest data given by ministry of science and technology how many unicorns are there in india again there was a conference and in that conference dr jitendra singh participated and during that conference he said that till now uh, there are 105 unicorns in india right and of course you must be knowing what is the meaning of unicorn can you tell me that write down in the comments what is the meaning of a unicorn startup write down in the comments moving ahead to question number 10 name the newsletter of the indian cyber crime coordination center which in short is i4c launched under the cyber and information security division of ministry of home affairs it covers <coughs> information related to various initiative which have been uh, taken till now to tackle the cyber crime so this is nothing but a newsletter of ministry of home affairs in which various initiatives uh, which have been taken by the central government by the state government by the other stakeholders to tackle the cyber crimes is mentioned right and the name is cyber pravaha option c is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 11 which of the following has organized the capacity building program in cloud computing for central and state government officials right central or state government officials ke liye cloud computing ke liye capacity building program kaun se organization ne launch kiya hai so that is nigd national governance division option a is the correct answer moving ahead how much amount was approved by the government of india for the national bee keeping and honey mission for 3 years starting from financial year 21 to financial year 23 that is the current financial year so for national bee keeping and honey mission total 500 crores were approved option b is the correct answer and the last question for today which ministry has organized a webinar women as catalyst for change that brought forth discussion on the need 
to narrow the gender gap in the fisheries sector. <coughs> fisheries sector में narrow gender gap को कम करने के लिए this uh, webinar was organized by Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairy. Right option C is the correct answer and the minister is Purushottam Rupal. Option C. And that's it for today's session, guys. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. And I will see you in the next session on Friday. Goodbye, take care and God bless.